What's going on everyone, Doc here, and today I want to talk about Ronin. Ronin's a really interesting skill champion. He has a lot of damage from a lot of bleeds. Um, he has a little bit of uh, ability accuracy reduction, a uh, lot of critical rate and critical damage, and he is an absolute ton of fun to play. Um, I've learned to play him in this really, really aggressive play style um, to build up his damage as fast as possible, and I'm going to try and teach you guys how to play that today. Um, hopefully you find this video useful if you have a high rank 5 star or a 4 star if you're just starting out or even a 6 star. So um, I'm going to go over all of his abilities, even his dupe ability even though I don't have him duped as 5 star. And then I have a lot of gameplay showing him off and how to play in the really aggressive style and just how much his maximum damage can reach. And hopefully it surprises you as much as it surprised me. Uh, this is only a 5 star R3 so damage numbers get pretty good for that. So. Let's hop right into abilities and then I'll do gameplay after. Whenever Ronin would miss or be evaded by the opponent, he gains a cruelty passive which increases critical damage. These cruelty passives can be stacked up to 7 times and there's multiple ways that Ronin can gain them. All of Ronin's sword attacks have a 15% chance to inflict bleed, dealing direct damage for 7 seconds. Critical strikes using this sword have a 100% chance to inflict this bleed. Intercepting attacks have an increased critical rating. And against bleed immune champions, whenever you we, whatever you would inflict a bleed, you will instead gain a cruelty passive, again to the maximum of 7 stacks. Ronin's most important ability is his stances. So Ronin has three different stances, Guard, Wraith, and Demon, and all of them give him a different benefit. On the right there you can see a little chart of what they look like when they're both readied, and when they're actually active, readied is the grayed out buff, or grayed out passive, and um, when he's actually active in the stance, then it's going to be colored, either green or orange. Um, so Runa prepares these stances by performing light attacks. This can be either actually hitting the opponent uh, with the light attack or actually hitting into their block with light attack. So once you prepare the stances, then you have to dash back to actually enter the stance. Uh, Runa's evades that he gets from his um, SIG ability don't actually have him enter the stances. Stances are not affected by ability accuracy reduction, so you're always going to proc them even against champions like Domino. Now when you enter the new stance, you're going to gain a cruelty passive, just like the other two abilities I already talked about, uh, up to a maximum of 7 again. When you reach all 7 cruelty passives, so it's maximum, you're going to gain a precision passive, increasing critical rating by a lot for 15 seconds. So these are all three of his stances, Guard, Wraith, and Demon. Uh, like I said, each one of them has this different benefit. Um, the biggest one to show off is Guard. You can see here, in here I'm fighting Void. I switch to Guard stance by hitting into his block, and then... Guard Stance gives you a 100% chance to purify any, any debuff, both damaging and non-damaging, upon entering the stance. In addition to that, uh, well-timed blocks always activate the Parry Mastery in um, Guard, and stunning, uh, stunning opponents, even if their attack is projectile-based. Extra 35% chance to perfect block. Uh, Wraith Stance, all attacks reduce defense ability accuracy, uh, so stuff like evades by 40%. And then finally, Demon Stance. All bleeds gain 75% increased ability accuracy and can be inflicted even on blocked hits. Runa's SP1 places a disorient debuff on the opponent, reducing defensive ability accuracy and block efficiency for 8 seconds. In addition to that, you will enter any prepared stance. Runa's SP2 will inflict a bleed that deals direct damage over 7 seconds for each active cruelty passive. Uh, upon the ending of the SP2, you also remove all cruelty passives. So the more cruelties you have, the more damage you do, but then you lose all of them at the end of the special. With Ronin's SP3, at the end you will gain a Fury passive increasing attack for 35 seconds. And each cruelty passive that you had upon entering the, entering the SP3 uh, will increase the attack rating given by the Fury by the same amount. And you will also remove all cruelty passives um, once the SP3 is finished as well. Ronin's SIG ability is kind of nice to have in some situations, but it's not at all necessary. So while at 7 pa cruelty passes, you will gain a passive evasion on the next incoming hit, similar to the Nick Fury synergy. It'll only activate if you were to actually get hit. Um, what will happen is that this, when, you, when you actually get this evade, you're going to remove all cruelty passes on yourself. Um, and the evades do not grant stance um, abilities, like I said before. Uh, when you evade an attack, for each attack you evade, you can see I evade 2 here against a War Machine. Gain a Fury passive, increasing attack rating for 7 seconds. Ronin has 4 unique synergies and 1 non-unique synergy, that non-unique synergy being a Roman synergy with Black Widow uh, for increased power gain. So his 4 unique synergies are all pretty interesting, but I think I avoided using them in any gameplay. 
um, just to show how he is. Um, if you were to just add him to your team as is without needing a four extra champions, there's really no point to showing that. Um, so first off with Captain Marvel movie, uh, increase of 3% bleed duration for each act of cruelty, so up to 21% increased bleed duration. With Ant-Man, 25% increased block proficiency in guard stance. With Nightcrawler and Guillotine, blocking attacks have a 50% chance to inflict bleed on the opponent, so very similar to Blade. Uh, if you're familiar with Blade and you parry with him. Uh, and then finally with, with Moon Knight, you gain a Fury buff, increasing attack by 15% for 4 seconds. So all of these are kind of nice to have. Um, two different um, regards. I think the Moon Knight one is probably the best, but the Captain Marvel uh, movie one is pretty nice, and the Guillotine Nightcrawler one is pretty nice, and the Ant Man one's kind of just there. Um, another really interesting synergy that affects him uh, pretty strongly is this one on Black Panther Civil War with either Hawkeye or Black Panther OG. Skill champions deal 25% increased bleed damage. Ronan has a lot of bleed damage. Uh, that's where a lot of his damage comes from if he's not critting. Um, so this can be really nice to have as well. Um, and because Black Panther's Civil War is available as a lot of different rarities, uh, you may just have him in your roster anyways. And if you want to buff Ronan, you can. But like I said, uh, I'm trying to show a lot of gameplay without it. So let's hop into that now. So what is Ronan's maximum damage? Ronan's maximum damage is actually pretty easy to get through a pretty basic rotation. Uh, most The hardest part is playing aggressive. Um, once you use your SP3 first, uh, you want to re play really aggressive to gain back up your cruelties while you still have that Fury attack and get to another SP2. So with basic rotation is SP3 and an SP2. And while you're gaining up power for both of those attacks, you want to be switching in and out of stances on and off um, because that's what's going to give you the cruelties. So one thing that I haven't mentioned in its abilities yet is that you notice that the precision runs out and I can switch stances, regain that precision, and I'm going to enter into the SP3. So now all the all the cruelty buffs that I built up through switching stances are going to go away. So I lose all seven of those, but that precision stays around. So you can reactivate the precision at any time when you have all stances, um, but you can't activate it when it's still up. So you can still get a close to 100% uptime on that. But that helps my damage when I come out of that SP3 because all those cruelties are gone, which are going to hurt it. But now I'm going to play aggressive. Uh, precision is going to go away. That's perfectly fine because I have that Fury and that's the main focus. That Getting that Precision again is just an extra bonus there. Uh, so I'm going to switch stance as aggressive as possible. You can see the Fury is about half out now and I'm, I'm at a good level of power. Um, in and out of stances again. Uh, which stance you are, you are in for your SP2 does not matter. Um, right here, I'm going to be in Wraith Stance, but preferably I would try to be in Demon, but I don't switch. And I hit for 7k, 4k, 7k, and just under 7k. A Bleed is now ticking for 702 damage per second per tick, which is over 1,400 damage per second. Didn't last too long, but couple of that with something like the, um, something like the uh, Cat Marvel movie uh, synergy. Um, or with the Black Panther um, Civil War increased um, bleed damage synergy. Uh, lots of synergies could help you out there, um, but even by itself, it's just a massive amount of damage. So this Winter Soldier fight took me about three of those maximum damage rotations to get him down. Um, so I did about over 100,000 damage there to get that max rotation. Okay, so since abilities didn't take too long, I wanted to do a lot of gameplay and focus on different styles of playing Ronin, some different rotations. You already saw the maximum damage one, which is really good, but there's some other ways to play him and also talk about playing him really aggressively. So this is Magic and Hall of Heroes, 70k health. Um, I tried both her and Electro and she came out a little bit better. Uh, what I wanted to do was show a fight of focusing on only ability axe reduction. So I'm trying to use his Wraith Stance as much as possible and spam the SP1. So Wraith Stance gives a 40% defense, defensive ability axe reduction. And SP1 will place a Disorient on Magic, which will also give a 40% abil ability axe reduction. So a total of 80% reduction. And it helped sometimes, I guess is the best way to say it. Um, as in terms of ability axe reduction champions, by far he is not the best um, not only can he only hit a maximum of 80%, but you need to be in a specific, specific stance, and you need to be spamming that SP1 to get that. 
Um, despite not taking any hits, I ended up really low just because of Lumbo and blocked hits didn't help either, but it was mostly Limbo damage there. Uh, Electro ended up pretty much the same um, with just taking a lot of damage. This ability axe reduction is not strong, but it is possible to use. So now I'm going to show six fights in 541. So this is a 70k Venom Pool, and fights in this path range from anywhere from 70k to 40k. This is the Vitality path. Um, if you go to portals, it'll say Vitality, and it's a bunch of nodes with Vigor on them. So Vigor is if I don't get the opponent to 25% interval, so 75%, 50%, 25%, um, before that little timer runs out, then they're going to regen quite a bit. Um, and then the time is going to start again. So it's all about doing a lot of burst damage. So one thing about Ronin is that you can see he re he regen from the first figure trigger. Um, Ronin's ramp up is really important, and playing him really aggressively is even more important because that helps your ramp up be faster and helps you get to that maximum damage. Uh, luckily, Venompool is the chunkiest fight on this uh, path. Sorry, Venompool. Um, so this is the only time I actually had to use the SP3 for that Fury. Um, but the Fury really helps out his damage. Um, he just absolutely shreds through Venipool. I probably could have just finished that uh, combo before off with a 5 hit, or a 6 hit combo there, and it would have been fine, but did it anyway. So skipping over two fights here in the path, uh, next up is Wolverine. So again, I'm going to play relatively aggressively here, hitting into his block a lot to change stances. So one thing that you'll notice if you go through this gameplay a lot is that when I do my stance changes, if I'm hitting into him normally and then I back out, I'll go right back in. But if I'm hitting into his block and then I back out, I will not go right back in. And that is for a reason. So the AI basically has a lot faster recovery rate uh, if you're hitting into the block than if you're hitting into them uh, normally. So essentially if I hit into their block they're much more likely to if i back out respond with a light attack uh, and then if i go back in then i'm really likely to get hit by just the ai spamming light attacks um so i, I avoid that i do it like once once or twice and it doesn't always end up horribly um but playing the kind of aggressive style that i play is it can cause mistakes and you'll see that in the next fight but it is still one of the best ways to play ronin in my opinion because it helps you get a lot faster um, ramp up. It is not at all necessary though to play this way, um, but it is a lot of fun from my experience playing this way. Um, and it's a lot, like I said, it's a lot faster for the ramp up. So essentially what I do when I do this kind of um, aggressive ramp up is I'm hitting a couple of lights, backing out and going straight back in. Um, I'm gonna do it a couple times there. Um, into a block this time. I'm going to back out. Not going to go back in. I'm going to wait for an SP1. Back out. Go back in. Back out. Go back in. Now she backed out and also went back in, which caused her to win the intercept fight there, um, which will happen sometimes. Not all. The not all the time though, um, because her her health is getting pretty low. I'm just going to go straight for an SP2 like I did in the Wolverine fight as well, um, and she's got 12 bleeds on her now, so we're doing some really good damage here. Um, getting back up our cruelties, but we don't necessarily need them. We've got three more bleeds on her. Um, gonna switch stances a couple more times there, and we're just gonna use an SP1. Uh, SP1 would have activated that stance at all, but as well, but didn't really need it. So, couple fights down now the path, only 40 hits on that one. Next up, Superior Iron Man. So, one thing that I did with Superior Iron Man, like I talked about before with that burst um, ability axe reduction, was stopping his healing. I didn't quite get that in this fight, um, but that is the best use for his ability axe reduction that I've found, and it's just worth mentioning really quickly here. Um, just being able to quickly quickly switch into Raid Stance and quickly use an SP1 to get an 85, 80% ability axe reduction could stop something like Superior Iron Man's heal, um, and it is an option for that. Uh, however, because it's a normal fight here, I'm just gonna go for that SP2 here, um, but because the precision was almost out, I decided to refresh the precision, go back to uh, Demon Stance, get back to Demon Stance, beta out an SP1, and then I'll go in for my SP2 here. Um, I think that's only the first or second time you've seen 
um, me using his second medium attack. I rarely use it. It's that two hit thing and it messes up my time on special attacks. If you're not familiar with it, I'm sure it'll mess up your timing attacks too, but it gets better. Um, so I didn't stop his regen, but all of the bleeds did. Um, lots of bleeds there did really good. So uh, Blade, I thought would be a much more difficult fight than it actually was. Um, so Blade has the, for those of you who don't know, he will reduce the duration of those bleeds based on his power level. And even though I'm spamming SP1, sometimes sometimes it really does um, reduce the, um, the duration of them. And I thought it would hurt his damage a lot because a lot of Ronin's damage, um, especially after the ramp up and during the ramp up, comes from those bleeds. It really didn't hurt him that much just having them reduced. Um, I did I did pretty good here just baiting out SP1s and his damage was perfectly fine. Uh, placed a bleed through the block there. Um, got an intercept and burst on 4% health. Um, so super low here, but managed to get a really good intercept there. Gonna go again for that second medium and into an SP1. I use that second medium so infrequently, it's mostly when I'm trying to land that SP2. Okay, so now I'm still not done. 4% health on Ronin versus Deadpool. This is the best Ronin fight I have ever recorded. It's the best Ronin fight I've ever done. And it is hope it will hopefully be the best Ronin fight you will see uh, for the next year. Um, because I'm incredibly happy with this fight. So this is a great example of how to play Ronin aggressively while not suicidal, like you saw against Wolverine X23. That was a little bit too much, but this is a really good example of playing him. Um, I'm baiting out stuff like heavy attacks, um, hitting into his block to switch stances, um, and also, most importantly, baiting out specials. So hitting into his block a couple of times will also help me help um, when I back out. It'll help him be slightly aggressive as well, um, which I did a couple of times. And obviously, I'm getting lots of intercepts here and trying to keep Vigor from triggering. Um, so doing pretty good. We used one SP2 there. Um, some pretty good damage, about 70% of his, um, and Deadpool's constantly regenerating. Um, so using something like the Despair Mastery, uh, with Ronin is def- I definitely would recommend it. Um, I think I- think at most I'm running one point in it. I don't even know if I am running any points with it, but that and Deep Wounds I definitely recommend if you have a six-star Ronin or- and are looking to play him to a maximum level that you can. Uh, I'm still so- Basically, because I used the SP1, I'm going to build up all my charges one more time and go for another SP1. Uh, switch into Wraith Stance here real quick. Uh, go into his block a couple more times. Uh, hit into his block to get, get him to a bar of power. Switch Stance. Bait out that SP1. And medium, medium, medium into an SP2. And he is down 4% health to and killed Deadpool. So really, really happy with that fight. Really good example of Ronin gameplay as well. Finally, so that was all Act 5. I wanted to do one fight in Act 6, and although I do make that mistake in this fight, um, I wanted to use this to show this one because I um, have a little trip, a trick in here that I haven't showed off yet. So, Gamora is not too difficult to fight, um, but for a 5-star R3, Act 6 can be kind of difficult, especially this is 626. So this is the champion um, boss quest. Um, and we're at the very beginning of the quest here, just because I wanted something easy to get to. So unlike the previous fights where I didn't need to reach maximum damage, I need to here. Uh, she's only down 80%, um, which is not too good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-trigger precision. I'm going to hit to her block with two more lights. I got the grayed out stance, and I'm going into an SP2. Or SP3, sorry. So what that allows me to do is that once the SP3 is done, I just dash right back and boom, an extra stance trigger. Uh, I still have that precision because I re-triggered it. Um, and I tried to do it for every SP3 in this video, I think. Um, and it's just a little bit faster on the recovery of my damage, getting back all those cruelties. Um, hitting already for 4K um, medium crits. Uh, I think he, I, he gets up to 5K here. Um, because I'm also below 50% health, so I get that bonus from Masteries. Yeah, so 5k right there. We're doing pretty good. Fury's almost out, so I'm going to try to parry there, but I didn't quite get it. So going for the 5 hit combo, 5 out of 6 hit crit, crit, and then all of the hits in the SP2 crit. That precision buff 
is massive. Really helps him out a lot. Um, so she's almost dead. I don't quite need to go for another SP2, but that SP2 with all the all the um, with the fury buff was really really good. Um, it's, the, it's the same thing you saw before with the um, with the Winter Soldier fight, but I just wanted to show it in a more natural fight than Winter Soldier. Um, so just kind of sp spamming basically SP ones. And she's down. Not too bad at all. About two minutes there for that fight. Not bad for a five star R three. I was really impressed with, the, with how he handled that fight. So that's pretty much Ronin. Um, I did my best to show a lot of gameplay without synergies, just because I feel like that's the best way to use this character. Not a lot of people are going to be bringing a Moon Knight. Uh, Captain Marvel is a good one, um, but Guillotine, Nightcrawler as well. They don't really, um, they're not really a lot of common champions to use. But if you have them, then they definitely give them a good bonus as well. Um, so his bleed damage like I showed off is really, really phenomenal. Uh, like I said, max deep wounds and max despair are definitely some phenomenal masteries for him and I highly recommend him if you have him as a six star and you're gonna be using him uh, quite often because of that. Um, at a high level end game kind of content. Um, other than that, yeah, that pretty much shows what I wanted to show today. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you found this useful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.